Hey everybody, this is Tom Nash, and apparently the Federal Reserve is about to cut rates multiple times in 2024, the stock market is about to hit new stratospheric highs, and inflation is cancelled. That is based on today's inflation data, which in 24 hours went from inflation is killing the US economy and the stock market into inflation is cancelled, all within 24 hours. So, like I told you yesterday, I'm going to tell the same thing today. This is not as simple as it may sound. Do not overreact. There's no time to knee-jerk this thing. You have to actually be analytical, objective, and smart. So today we have another important indicator that came out. Yesterday's CPI was hotter than expected. People overreacted and panicked. Today we have a slightly cooler than expected PPI, Producers Price Index, which essentially is the wholesale inflation. Now, the wholesale inflation is super important. I'm going to break through the numbers in a second, but just you have to understand this concept. CPI is basically a lagging indicator. It shows us how much prices rose in March. PPI basically shows us the pricing of the raw materials, of the building blocks that are used to produce the same goods and services that are being sold later and comprise the CPI. So when you have PPI data come out, it's not a lagging indicator like CPI. This is a leading indicator because you get to peek into where is the direction of inflation. And when you have PPI, the wholesale inflation coming down, well, not really coming down, but slowing down would be more correct, then it's a very encouraging sign. Does that mean inflation is canceled? No, but here's what it means. So now we have this leading indicator that the Fed absolutely loves, came out today and basically put everybody at ease. The wholesale inflation prices came up by 0.2% which is slightly cooler than the expected 0.3. Now, that is the cooler month we had since May of 2023. In fact, June of 2023. This is the best month we had since June of 2023. At the same time, just last month, in February, we had the hottest wholesale inflation month since June of 2022. So we just came off of a horrible PPI month in February into the best month in almost a year of PPI in March. So it is much, much better. We rose 0.6% last month. We only rose 0.2% this month. So this is very, very good. This is a relief. And essentially, this thing actually shows us that things are not as bad as they seem. Now, even if you look at X food and energy, PPI rose 0.2%, which is exactly in line with expectations. Now, the first thing I want to talk about here is the way that mainstream media misrepresents this whole thing, especially since we are in an election year. Now, look, I'm not going to get political here, but one thing really grinds my gears, and that is the fact that mainstream media is telling you that inflation is cooling off. Inflation isn't cooling off. It's not coming down. Inflation is actually the highest it's ever been. But what they're talking about is that the rate of acceleration of inflation is slowing down. So it's still very expensive to live in the U.S. Life is still very, very hard. And inflation is a hell of a lot higher than it was just a couple years ago. Things are way more expensive and your buck does not have the same bang it had just a few years ago. So let's put that on the table. Nothing is cooling off. In fact, the rate at which things are getting worse may be slowing down. So that's what we're talking about here. And that's important to clarify because mainstream media isn't doing that part of their job. Now, the other thing I want to talk about here is the limitation of expectations. When you look at mainstream media, when you look at the social media outlets, you hear all these expectations about how much rate cuts we're going to see in 2024. If inflation is cooling off, if it is slowing down, then how much rate cuts will the Fed allow us to get in this year? And when we talk about expectations, you don't get transparency that you should because expectations are not as solid, not as objective as they want you to think it is. Look, just in January of this year, about three months ago, the entire consensus in the market was five rate cuts. We are three months later and this thing literally has zero chance of happening in three months. Just yesterday, before the CPI data came out, we had a 100% for three rate cuts for 2024. In fact, after yesterday's inflation data, the consensus shifted to zero to one, maybe one rate cut in 2024. Today, just 24 hours later, the consensus is back to one to three. So look, consensus, expectation, these are subjective and very, very fluid things. You shouldn't absolutely rely on it as some sort of a God's truth. These things change all the time. Now, the next thing I want you to be careful of is the election narratives. We are in an election year. And what you're going to see this year is the same old game the government have been playing since the 1970s. In fact, probably even before. 
it sucks when your dollar does not stretch as much as it did in 2020. In fact, quite a lot less than that. It makes you angry. It makes you frustrated. It is one hell of an emotionally taxing experience as somebody, you know, who has a family to take care of. And these politicians and these social media clickbaiters and all the people who want to get on your nerves and push these buttons, they're going to tell you all these stories that it's the fault of some Arab sheik in Saudi Arabia or it's the fault of the U.S. companies being greedy and all this nonsense and crap and how the solution is just, you know, setting prices and price limitations and whatnot. Look, you can hear some of Milton Friedman's, uh, you know, lectures about this. This horse baloney. It's a very, very simple calculation. Look, guys, inflation comes from overprinting of money, which the U.S. did plenty. It causes massive inflation. Then we blame OPEC. Then we blame the U.S. companies for price gouging. At the end of the day, when the economy is going to run through all this extra money, when the economy is going to basically run out of fuel, inflation will come down. It's all about money printing. If the U.S. government slows down the money printing, inflation will go away. If the U.S. economy is going to be a money printing economy, inflation will stay. And it's not going to be the blame of OPEC or the U.S. insurance companies <laughs> or oil companies. So now that we covered all these bases, let's talk about how this new inflation data perhaps potentially changes everything. Changes your mortgage payment, your car payment, the way the stock market works, your portfolio. Let's talk about what's actually going on and how we as investors can prepare for this. Now, look, just a few days ago, before the CPI data came out, we have to be honest, Jamie Dimon put a 60-page letter warning people that inflation is getting worse and that he foresees an 8% interest rate with a stagflation in environment for the rest of 2024. Now, he's also talking about a potential of a market pullback. It's going to be quite painful. And he sees things are getting worse and not getting better. And in fact, just a couple of days passed by and Jamie Dimon's prediction looks on point as CPI data comes out way hotter than expected at three and a half percent, which is a hell of a lot higher than the 3.2 we had last month and an increase that is hotter than expected. Now, if you also look at core, which basically inflation without food and without energy, the two more volatile items, we're still up from 3.7 to 3.8. Now, these numbers on their own accord are not that scary. It's pretty much in the normal range. But when you look a little bit deeper under the hood, this is where the concern comes out from. Because if you look at super core inflation, now that basically excludes food, energy, and shelter. Shelter went up 5.7% in March. Absolutely insane. So if you take out food, if you take out energy, if you take out shelter, Supercore went up to 4.8%. That is the highest pace of increase we've seen in a year. And if you just annualize the last three months, we are on an 8% annual pace. Absolutely insane. There's no excuse here. It's not about the oil prices. It's not about the rents. It's not about any lagging indicators. The fact is that Supercore going up 4.8% and an annualized 8 percent rate is an alarming thing. It's a worrying thing that we all need to be concerned about. And now that the dust has settled and we've seen the negativity of CPI yesterday, the positivity of the PPI today, the market has decided that we still will have probably three rate cuts in 2024, although now we're not as sure about it as we were just 24 hours ago. And that's a first statement because the CPI data was, as I just showed you, quite alarming. Now, based on the Fed watch tool by CME, we only have a 16% of a rate cut in June. Now, I would adjust that to 0.0%. We're not going to have a rate cut in June. There's still a 37% for one cut in July. And if you combine it with a 5%, <laughs> For the two rate cuts in July, which is absolutely preposterous, there's a 42% chance of a rate cut in July. That should go down to 0.0% as well. June and July are not going to be a rate cut months, no matter what happens going forward. And as I show you in a second, there's a good reason for that. Now we get to September, November, December, the three months where the market actually predicts a cut, although not at the same levels of certainty. In September, we're getting 65% chance of a rate cut. Not crazy, but a hell of a lot better than less than 50%. In November, that number goes up to 73%. And in December, we get 86%. Now, I assume these numbers will change as the day shifts. But basically, we have one certain cut in December, as it stands right now, and two 
much, much less certain cuts in November and September that might merge into one. So realistically, we're looking to one or two or maybe maximum three rate cuts, but a completely different level of certainty, not nearly as certain as we had just 24 hours ago. Nevertheless, there's still a significant camp that believes that the second half of 2024 is going to be much easier for inflation, allowing the Fed to cut rates a lot faster and bring the market to new highs. Now, the leader of that group is Tom Lee, a guy I also showed on my channel, the only guy that gives me a competition for the quality of hair. And Tom Lee is basically saying, look, unless the Federal Reserve raises rates in 2024, we're still going to have a good year. Whether they cut rates or they keep them as is, in those two scenarios, we'll be fine. Now, for that prediction to come true, we'll need a few things. Number one, we will need oil prices to come slightly down towards the $75, $70 per barrel. Number two, we'll need two consecutive CPI data months that are positive, that are cooler than expected. And we need super core inflation, the one that excludes energy, food, and shelter to come down and not be at an 8% annualized rate based on the last three readings. But as much as I want to believe Tom Lee or I want to believe Jamie Dimon, the data doesn't lie. So we have to take a look at the data. Now, the way CPI measurements work is that they get compared to the previous year's month. Think about it this way. When you're running away from a lion, it's not your job to outrun the lion. It's your job to outrun the guy running next to you. It's the same thing with CPI. CPI is measured against the previous year's same month. So if you have horrible months of inflation, very, very high inflation months last year, it's going to be easier for us to get a decline, to get a better looking read. So the comparison numbers are super important, basically meaning that if you have low inflation numbers in certain months last year, it's going to make it harder for you to get good reads on the CPI this year. Now, looking at the data right here in front of me, we have 6.4% in January, which was a good month to compare to. We had 6% in February, which is another good month to compare to. The inflation was high. We had 5% at March, which is still higher, but we still couldn't get it done. But then from that point on, if you look at April, 4.9%, May, 4%, June, 3%, July, 3.2%. So basically for the rest of this year, now that we're done with March, we're not going to have any readings above 5% to compare to. And if we take out April, all of them are 4% or lower. Now the comparable numbers are not going to make things easy and oil prices are not going to make things easy. As geopolitical tensions come up, as wars get worse, and as summer months and demand for oil will come up, oil is going to play a huge part in making things not easy. On the other hand, there's one thing mainstream media and social media isn't telling you, which is that the current leaders in the CPI report that we saw yesterday was transportation and shelter. Shelter is rents. Transportation, think about it like auto insurance. Now, these are the two most lagging indicators that the universe has ever given us in the CPI report because people renew their auto insurance once per year. It's a decision that's made annually and people don't renew their rent agreements every single month. It's an annual decision at best, sometimes biannual, sometimes even longer than that. So these things, rent agreements and auto insurance, they take a year to update. It is what it is. So what you have here is two countering arguments. On the one hand, you have two lagging indicators creating a fake CPI, so to speak. On the other hand, commodities and oil are naturally organically pushing CPI up. And these two things are actually not mutually exclusive. You have to think about both. Now, look, I know a lot of people are not going to get facts to get in the way of a good narrative. That's not what we're going to do here. Because think about it this way. Oil prices, energy prices, it's not just about how much you pay at the pump. If you have a factory, if you're producing goods, the price of energy increases the price of your goods. So this thing goes way, way deeper than what people are telling you on mainstream media. And now we're getting to the interesting part how this whole thing impacts the stock market for the rest of the year. I don't have a time machine. Nobody knows about what happens in the future with the exception of Matt Groening. We don't know. Number two, there's a lot of conspiracies running around about election economy and monkey business. Maybe, maybe not. I don't have any direct information about that. Election economy is a thing. On the other hand, do they have some backdoor dealings in which they're going to fake the CPI numbers to get Biden reelected? I don't know. Let's not talk about things we have no knowledge about. Let's talk about things that we actually can analyze. The way the stock market works is we have stock prices. Stock prices get derived from earnings. You have more earnings, your stocks are worth more. Earnings get decided by consumers spending money. Consumers spend money if the economy is good. If the economy is good, 
consumers spend money, earnings go up, stock prices go up. Now, that can happen in a higher interest environment. In fact, it happened for the past few months. If you look at 2023, we're in the middle of a bull market with very high interest. They can coexist. A strong economy can drive stock prices up without the rate cutting rates. It's possible. But here's the thing. Higher rates will mean that it's going to be costly to borrow money. The cost of capital will come up. The valuations of companies through DCF, through discounted cash flow valuations from the future will come down naturally. Now, obviously, the stock market will be driven by the strength of the economy and the consumer strength, no doubt. But higher interest rates will lead to lower valuations of public companies. When you have high interest rates, then your DCF valuation of future cash flows comes down. And that's going to have an impact on the multiples investors will be willing to pay for the same stocks. If interest rates remain higher for longer, then the multiples will shrink even if earnings come up. It's something that you have to take into account. And to keep it simple, here's the bottom line. There's a few scenarios for the rest of 2024, and I'm going to tell you how the stock market will behave in every one of these scenarios. Scenario number one, we get all the three rate cuts in 2024. The market goes absolutely ballistic, an amazing year. Scenario number two, we're getting one to two rate cuts, not as we expected, less, but we're still getting one or two rate cuts. The market will still do great because still we're talking about two, maybe one rate cut at a great economy. Scenario number three, we're talking about no rate cuts, no change at all. Rate stays as it is for the rest of 2024. We're still going to have a decent market because the economy has shown the ability to stay resilient in a high interest environment. But if we get to scenario number four, scenario number four, if the Fed pushes up rates, like Jamie Dimon said, even if they push up rates to 6%, 6.2%, 6.5%, then the market will have to make a massive adjustment because the entire market valuation of stocks, of multiples, the entire setup we have right now is based on no further rate increases. Now, obviously, nobody here wants this to happen, but I'm doing my job in warning you about the potential risks. Now, look, how am I managing this risk? Because that's the bottom line you have to ask yourself. Well, look, Tom, you're talking about this risk. How are you managing this risk? Well, look, like anything that has to do with insurance, you're talking about a low probability, high risk event. Low chance of it happening, but if it happens, it's going to destroy you. Now, I don't want my portfolio destroyed. So here's how you can prepare four things you can do to prepare your portfolio. Number one, if you are heavily, heavily up in 2023, you had a great year, you've doubled your money, good for you. You can take 30% of your profits and put it in cash. So if the market crashes, then you still save 30% of your great year. If the market goes up, you still have 70% in play and you're going to enjoy the ride. Number two, you can put stop losses on your big winners that if the market pulls back all of a sudden, you will get protected. Number three, you can add a money market fund component to your portfolios. Most of you here in the channel, you don't freak with bonds. I get it. I understand it. But let me tell you something. The top 1% of investors in the US based on a Vanguard study allocate one quarter of their portfolio to bonds. You think it's a bad thing to invest like the top 1%? I don't. Look, bonds are not going to make you rich. But if interest rates stay higher for longer, bonds is going to make you very comfortable. So money market funds that will protect you is another good thing to manage your risk. Not saying to put a quarter in, but put something in so at least you have that safety deposit, that insurance policy. And most of all, above everything else, you have to stay long term mindful because look, even if you look at the Jamie Dimon letter as a horrible letter, it's not. Jamie Dimon literally says, yes, we're looking into a stagflationary period, but long term, I see great things for this market because the AI revolution is going to be as big as the invention of electricity. So there's going to be a lot of money being made in the stock market in the future. If you stay long term minded and you just DCA and you ignore these little bumps in the road, you're going to be fine. Above everything else, stay long term committed, DCA, and that's it. And of course, I'd like to teach you how to do exactly that, how to DCA, how to pick the right companies, how to increase your DCA at certain times. You can actually lower your cost basis without timing the market. These are all things that I teach on my academy, the Royal Academy at patreon.com forward slash Tom Nash. We would love to have you join us, test it out, see if it's for you. I have a 30 day money back guarantee to anybody who joins, test it out risk free. And of course, you're more than welcome to join the community. That's free. Discord.gg slash Tom Nash. Join a 10,000 member community. Talk to us, get some ideas, get some reassurance understand the risk. And if you haven't yet, I urge you to check out Stock MVP. If you made it all this way in this video, that means you're an OG. I'm going to give you a code TOM25. If you're going to use this code, you can get Stock MVP for 25% off for lifetime. And this code will lock in your price 
Whenever we raise prices, which we will soon, your price stays locked for life. You get grandfathered at an original price. Check it out, test it out, stock-mp.com. We would love to have it tested out. It's a brilliant software that we built for you guys. Check it out. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.